Hi, teacher. Eh, voy a estar de oyente quizás la primera hora. Adriana. Soy Adriana. Sí, okay, estoy Adriana. trabajando ahorita. Sí, gracias, right. teacher. Ok. How are you today? How was the rain in your house? We have a very, very heavy rain again, right? Like yesterday. Okay, vamos a ver. Vamos a ver, ya vemos más. Ok. Adriana Marcela. Present teacher. Ana Alicia. Carlos Josué. David Alexander. Present teacher. Diego. Present teacher. Edwin Mauricio. Present teacher. Elda Cristina. Elda Cristina. No está Elda Cristina. Elmer Fabricio. Elmer Fabricio. Gemma Carolina. Present teacher. Ok. Gemma Carolina. Jessica. Jessica. José Alfredo. José Alberto. Karen Janet, Karen Janet, Karen Stephanie, Carla Lorena, present teacher, Liseta Yanara, present teacher, Nubia, Oscar Mauricio, Rebeca Marcela, Rodrigo Marcelo, Ana Grisel, Carolina, Ray. Present teacher. Rosa Hilda. Present teacher. Luis Mauricio. Ok, vamos a ver si alguien se nos ha unido después de que lo llamé. Ok, Diego. José Alfredo de Camino también. Ok. Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Okay. Very heavy rain again, right? Right. Vamos a ver. Ana. Carlos Josué. Elda Cristina. Gema. Jessica. José Alfredo. José Alberto. Present teacher. Okay. Karen, Karen Janet, and Karen Stephanie, Nubia, present issue, 
Okay. Oscar. Rebecca. Rodrigo. Ana Grisel. Carolina Abigail. Luis Mauricio. Ok. Me imagino yo que algunos van todavía de viaje. ¿verdad? Good evening, teacher. Hello. How are you, Ana? Fine, thank you. I'm here, present. <laughs> okay. Well. We are on class number eight, right? Class number eight. Okay, there we go. Remember yesterday we were talking about processes uh, and procedures, right? Today, um, the class is called talking about procedures. Uh, remember, we have been talking about procedures. We have been talking about steps and all the, the, the things that you have to follow at work when you're doing a task, right? Well, we're going to start with this discussion. What is a procedure? You already know we have been discussing that almost all the week, right? What is a procedure and what processes, or what are procedures, sorry, are procedures important at the workplace? And then you tell me why. Why are procedures important at the workplace? And I'm adding a new question. Is it possible to complete a task without following a procedure? Is it possible? Well, I'm going to send you, you're going to discuss these questions as they, they are not in the manual. I'm going to share them in the chat. But in the WhatsApp chat, okay? I'm going to send you in groups and you're going to discuss these questions. There we go. Mm. Nice. But check the questions are there. Okay, batch of points. You're going to go in groups of three, so you discuss the questions and get ready to check. 14. Hmm. We will have the, yeah, couple of groups of four. Adriana, Diego, Jose Alfredo. Adriana is not here. Oh, okay. Well, let's go to the groups, discuss the questions, and then be ready to share your answers, right? Try to join, please. Join a group. Try to join.
que es a medicarse o de eso, vitaminas. Uh -huh. Yo tomé una muy buena, se llama Surmenalit. Esas ayudó mucho. ¿Cómo se llama? La voy a apuntar ahorita. Surmenalit. Surmenalit. Uh -huh. Ok, comenzamos. What is a procedure? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Estamos pensando, teacher. <laughs> a procedure, a series of step follow. A series of action. Conducted in a certain order or manner. Steps. <clears throat> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Maybe in boldness, repetitive tasks. Send us a, a link that is the Cambridge yes, Dictionary. Yes. Yeah. Um, in this place, I will, I will, I looked for procedure. Uh -huh. Is the this first set? Of action that is the official or a set way of doing something. Uh -huh. The next question is Are procedures important of the workplace? What do you think? Uh, <laughs> Yes, it's important because when we need to do something, uh -huh. I don't know, uh, um, uh, the Hi, teacher. Hi. Ahorita estamos contestando la pregunta y después vamos a discutirla. Ok, perfecto. Eh, David, ya te mandé mis dos respuestas. Ok, ahorita la pongo. Conectando. Um, the, the object for a processor is a... Uh, the goal the finish um, or 
to use a procedure. And the result is the is it's that we wait for que es lo que esperamos que sea al final del procedimiento. Another idea. Did you finish here? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, let's go. I'm coming. Okay, everybody back. Let's see, first question. What is a procedure? Who can tell me? Mm -hmm. What is a procedure? Is the method uh, of the excusing is excusing a task. Okay. The method are action of or stay following for reach a goal. Okay. Great, great. One more definition. If you see, they are different because they go in the same way, right? Another is the official or usual way of doing something. The official or usual way of doing something. Very good, like it. Nice, nice, nice. Now, are procedures important at the workplace? Yes. Are, are procedures important? Why? Yes, teacher, are very important. Why? Because uh, task procedures make a workplace more efficient and allow staff members to follow guidelines when help isn't av available. 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 With clear outlines in place, tasks should all be completed correctly as there will be no room of no room for miscommunication here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. También dice que task procedures also help manage to lose of to loss of knowledge if an employee should decide to leave. Exactly. Imagine. And for example, if you know the procedures, right, to, to, to follow and to do and always are the same, they are like a rule in the company. If you are absent and somebody has to cover and do your job, 
that person will know exactly what to do, right? Because the rules, so the procedures are very clear and that's why they are very important, right? So the company continues working or running even if there is another person, the one who has to do uh, your job, right? Or the job they want, of the one that is absent. Okay, perfect. Now check. Today we are going to work with vocabulary. Remember the name is talking about procedures, but we're going to talk about procedures, vocabulary, right? Using the vocabulary that we will need for here for this. And as we're talking about restaurants, we're learning this vocabulary check. We have towing. Towing is a verb. And that means when the ice, snow or something else that is frozen, tows, right? Or it melts. When you tow frozen food or when it tows, you leave it in a place where it can reach room temperature so that it is ready to use. For example, when, a, when you want to cook your meat or chicken, right? And you have kept it in the, in the freezer, you take it out and sometimes you leave it outside and you wait it for you wait for it to get ready right to, to reach the room temperature so you're able to cook it one example using that word is it's so cold it's so cold the snow doesn't get a chance to tow you know if you saw the movie frozen you know that when it snows the the snow melts right if you saw the movie you remember when the the snowman was starting to melt because the sun appeared right okay the ground has towed why can we say that the ground has towed because the ground was covered of snow right then it's towed the food in the freezer has towed during a power cut. Yes, has towed. One synonym of this word will be melt. Another dissolve, soften, or defrost. Like the example we were giving for the chicken, right? To the meat that you take out from the refrigerator. And what you expect is that it gets ready to be cooked. Then you say, well, um, melt, dissolve, frozen, or defrost. Defrost. Okay, I have another minute. Teacher, excuse me. The Come. food in the freezer has towed during the corte de energía. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There was no electricity, the refrigerator was off, then the food from the freezer towed. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, we have another well, there are definitions here. Again, towing as a verb to melt or cause to melt from a solid frozen state. The snow toad, right? That's to melt or cause to melt from a solid frozen state. Another definition to become a to become or cause to become unfrozen. Yeah. Defrost. To be the case that the ice or snow is melting. When you say the ice or snow is melting, it is towing. Right, it is towing fast. Um, towing can also act as a noun, and that is the actual process of towing. Yeah, a spell of relatively warm weather causing snow or ice 
to melt. That is when you're using it as a noun. Now, we have a long word definition here for towing and towing is the process of taking a frozen product from frozen to a temperature usually above zero where there is no residual ice, example, the frosting. Towing is often considered simply the reversal of the freezing process. This is the important word here. The reversal, right? The reversal of the freezing process. For example, when you want to make ice cream, you froze it, right? That if you want to cook your chicken, you defrost it. Or, well, we cannot say you melt, you melt the, the chicken, but you defrost it. Yes. Any question? No question about towing? No, no. teacher. Perfect. Now check. What do you mean, teacher? Another definition here. Hand washing. What is hand washing? Hand washing is a verb. Yes, it is a verb. If you hand wash something, you wash it by hand rather than in a washing machine, right? You wash it by hand. Examples, I always hand wash delicate clothes. You have a delicate cloth, you don't put it in the washing machine, you wash it by hand. Okay, now sanitizing. This word became very popular now with the pandemic, right? Sanitizing. Some people say satanizing, right? <laughs> but that's sanitizing. Uh, sanitizing is a verb. If you sanitize something, you clean it so that there are no germs or bacteria on it. That's sanitize. As I said, that's probably an old word, but we started using it right with the pandemic. As in every event, we get new words and we start using the new words a lot. Okay, so we use oh, sanitizing as a new word in our vocabulary. An example of sanitizing is an internal memo also insists they clean and sanitize fans and sinks and throw away dishcloth. What is fans? We saw this word one of these days. What is pan? What is a pan? Not Casero. talking about bread, right? Not talking about bread. We're talking about Cacerola. Uh-huh. It's something we use for cooking, right? What is a sink? Lavaplatos. <clears throat> But not a dishwasher, right? Dishwasher, then in other countries, uh, they have a machine. Like we do with the washing machine, there is a dishwasher that's a machine for washing the dishes. But this one, no, this is a, a space, we can say, where you wash the dishes or where you wash your hands, right? What is dish clothes? What is it? What is this cloth? Mm -hmm. Los, como los trapos de limpiar. Uh -huh, exactly. The ones that you use for, for cleaning the dishes, right? For cleaning all the area of the kitchen. Now, another one, another example, they mopped, scrubbed, and sanitized. Yeah, what is mop? Como el trapeador. Uh -huh, but here is a verb, right? Ah, trapear. Uh -huh. In past. Because this Trapeo. is... <laughs> scrubbed. What is scrubbed? Barrio. Mm -hmm. That is sweep. 
have you seen, especially in all movies, the people used to get a, a brush and go cleaning very carefully. That is a scrubbed, yeah? Scrubbed. And sanitize, that is uh, the word that we use, right? Do you have any question here? I know when we check a word, a definition in English, it takes us to another word that could probably be new for us. No question here? Ahí decía fregado, o sea, como el fre fregar. Como Ajá. Ajá, fregar, pero no de andar molestando. Claro, claro. If you remember, well, that was mostly in, in old movies, right? Because right now we mop the floor, we sweep the floor, we mop it, or we can use a vacuum cleaner to clean the floor, right? That we do not scrub the floor. We can uh, sweep it with a wet, sweep with a wet broom. Right, but uh, not like getting a brush and scrubbing carefully. As I said, we used to do that. No, we people <laughs> in the past used to do that, but now not anymore, right? Okay, any questions? No, no questions. No teacher. Okay. Now, what is a storage? What is a, sco a storage? Bodega. Uh, something to, to help us to contain something. Mm -hmm. Some, it can be a, a noun, right? That's a noun. Storage can be whatever. For example, if you have a bowl for keeping pills, that's a storage. Or, for example, in your kitchen, you have a special place to keep uh, different things. Can be a a box, so can be a set of like little bottles for keeping different things, and though that is a type of storage, right? That is, if you refer to the storage of something, you mean that it is kept in a special place until it is needed, right? It is kept in a special place until it is needed. Next, there is a pantry, a food storage, a facility without which no kitchen can today be called smart, right? There is a pantry, what is a pantry? Hmm? What is a pantry? The pencil. Uh -huh. In the kitchen, we have a pantry, right? That's the part, the higher part in the kitchen. Not the one that is uh, under, it's the one that is above, right? That's the higher part in, in your kitchen where you keep, could be food or could be whatever, right? Okay, there is a pantry. Check it, the pantry knows the food storage, right? If you see, they are separating. The food storage will be the dispensa, Oscar. The pantry is the place where you keep usually cacerolas, right? All the pans and those things go there in the pantry. Mm -hmm. And the food storage, it, the food storage is the place where you keep food. You don't keep food in the pantry, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it says there is a pantry, a food storage facility without which no kitchen can today be called smart. So if your kitchen doesn't have a pantry or a food storage, it's not smart. My kitchen is not a smart. I don't have a pantry. <laughs> I'm still building my area of cooking. Now, look at number two. It is- Teacher, in, 
Uh -huh. excuse, excuse me, and the place where we save the dishes, glasses, cups. That is a China closet. China closet. China closet. Excuse me? China, China, the China, right? Really? Yeah. China closet. Now uh, we, well, people are changing, right? Things are changing and many people have like, well, the pantry, that's one of the parts. And part of the pantry has become bigger and you can put dishes here too, right? But remember the pantry is the higher part in your kitchen. Others have like, um, how do you call these shelves? Now that has become very, uh, very popular using open shelves instead of a pantry, right? That's like, like the new thing. But if you don't like open shelves for keeping things, you can use a pantry and the full storage that of course is closed, right? For not, a, not everybody to be watching what you have kept in your, in your full storage. Now let's go to the next question. It, it says, it is worth reminding about safe food storage at preparation. What is worth? Mm -hmm. See, what is worth? What does it mean? Como peor? No, it's like worse with S-E, but worth. Having a particular value, especially in money. Value. It's something that has a value. Yes. Okay. Now check. If it says it is worth reminding about safe food storage and preparation, that means vale la pena, right? So vale la pena when you say worth in this context. Vale la pena recordar, right? Remind a reminding or a reminder. It's something that um, you tell somebody who already knows. So you already know this, right? You already know that safe food storage is important, right? You know that. And you know that a, a safe preparation area is important. That, mm, I'm going to tell you again, so you remember, right? So that's why it says reminding. It is worth reminding about My safe food storage. So I'm helping you remember that. It's not like, oh, I remember. No, I'm, uh, somebody else is helping you uh, bring that to memory that safe food storage and preparation are important. Mm -hmm. Any question? Any question? No? No question. Any question here? No, teacher. Okay. No question. Now check, food storage is the process in which both, uh, which both cooked and raw materials are stored. Remember when we say store is a, this is a verb, right? This is not the noun that I know the store that is in the corner of my neighborhood, right? I'm talking about store like a verb. So I say food storage is the process in which both cooked and raw materials are stored in appropriate conditions for future use without an, any entry or multiplication of microorganisms. What is raw material? 
What is raw material? Materia prima. Mm -hmm, exactly. So in a, when we're talking about the kitchen, we can talk about okay, the beans, the spaghetti, the rice, the milk, the different things that we use when cooking, right? And it is very important, oh, well, in the food storage, is the process of keeping, when we say store, store is with the meaning of keep, right? Uh, things in the appropriate condition. So if you keep cooked food, you know how to, how to keep it and where to keep it, right? Where to store it. And the same with raw material. So that is food storage. When we talk about food storage, there are three, three options, right? One, dry storage. What is dry storage? Mm -hmm. Yes. What is dry storage? Who can help me read? It's almacenamiento en seco. Uh -huh. Read the definition. We have these words with similar spellings or pronunciation. Mm, what are you reading? Read the definition. Can you see the screen? Yes, right? Okay, read the definition for dry storage. It refers to the storing of items which don't require a climate controlled environment. Okay. So no climate control environment, right? No problem. That means if I'm keeping beans, if I'm keeping rice, or if I have okay, spaghetti, sugar, right? They, they, have, they don't have to, well, you don't have to worry about the climate or the environment and to control it. It doesn't have to be too hot to cool what's going to call to happen to them right if you store salt for example a flour flour for making bread or for making the tortillas so remember we're talking about your kitchen right all the things that you keep in your kitchen and that you store in your kitchen you have them ready to use later on but you don't have to worry about keeping them in the refrigerator because they will get damaged. And the other one uh, we have there, refrigerated storage, is defined as food that requires storage at a cool temperature. Uh, no freezing, but it has to be cold. And as for weather is no cold, we have to keep them, of course, in the refrigerator, right? And then the last one, we have frozen food storage, which are foods that require freezing. Hey, hey, we're missing a word here. Uh, foods that require freezing. For example, meat, chicken, fish, right? That definitely we have to keep them in the freezer because if no, they will get damaged. When we talk about refrigerated storage, you can talk about okay, tomatoes, green peppers, onions, milk, right? Cooked food that we were mentioning here. Some raw food like cheese, cream. They will they will need res, a, refri, to be refrigerated, right? But you know, there are some vegetables that definitely cannot be refrigerated. What vegetables are those ones? What vegetables cannot be refrigerated? Potatoes. Potatoes, yes. What else? Um. <laughs> the bananas. They get black, right? You put them in the refrigerator and they get immediately black. So you cannot keep them there. The carrots? Carrots. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Carrots can be in, can be out, no problem. Nothing happens to them. But potatoes, definitely, I don't remember what happens to them. <laughs> Fruit and vegetables. Uh -huh. Vegetables. Some vegetables Vegetable. can be kept like this in dry storage, but some others definitely have to go to the refrigerator, like herbs, right? If you use celery, a cylinder, all those herbs have to be in the refrigerator, right? If no, they will definitely get damaged. Okay, any question uh, about food storage? No, no questions, thanks. Okay, very good. Now, let's go to the next definition. Purchase, what is purchase? Mm -hmm. What does it mean, purchase? Purchase. Uh -huh. When you when I buy when you buy something, right? Purchase means buy something. Yeah. I have some examples. He purchased a ticket and went up on the top deck. Most of those shares were purchased from brokers. Which, who are the brokers? The people who work in La Bolsa de Valores, right? They are brokers. Okay. Purchase can also be a noun, not just a verb, right? As a verb, that means buy. But as a noun, a purchase is something that you buy. For example, if you say, hey, I, you know what? I made a purchase, right? So this is my purchase. I don't specify what exactly I bought, but okay, I bought, a, I did a purchase. It's una compra, right? So compra can be a noun, but comprar, like buy, will be a book. You have another definition. She opened the tie box and looked at her purchase. It was silk with maroon stripes, right? She looked at her purchase. And then we have some synonyms for purchase. That is acquisition, buy, investment, or property. Yes, those are some uh, synonyms of the word purchase. Now. Coming to tasting, tasting food. What is tasting food? As a noun, it is a kind, a kind of sensing. What is sensing? It has to be with the senses. In this case, the taste, right? The taste. So we have the smell, the sight, the touch, the hearing, and the taste. Right, so it's a kind of sensing, distinguishing substances by means of the taste buds. So you taste something because you feel the flavor, right? That's taking a small amount into the mouth to taste it, its quality. And you will see um, los catadores, right? So they, they taste. They put into practice this tasting method a lot. Also, it is a small, a small amount, especially of food or wine that's tasting. Now, synonyms. Uh, some synonyms of tasting method are taste, degustation, relishing, savoring, and savoring. Right, savoring or savoring, if a British or Ameri American or British, right? Tasting is using expressions such as wine tasting. That's like maybe the most common one, right? But also uh, when talking about food, that is also very common. It is used in expressions of, such as wine tasting to refer to a social event at which people try different kinds of the specific or specified drink 
or food in a small amount. It's not to get totally full, right? Or satisfied completely. It's just a sample, just to try and to see the taste or the flavor of the food. Okay. Any question? No question. Hmm? No. Okay. Well, now it's time for you to put into practice uh, all the definitions that we were working, that we were talking. I'm going to send you in groups. Let's see. Well. I'm going to call attendance before I send you to the groups, right? But what you're going to do in the groups is match the vocabulary. You have towing, food, hand washing, sanitizing, food storage, food chafe, tasting, methyl. And here you have the definitions, right? So match the words with the correct definition. And then, when you finish, you will write one sentence with each of the words. So use the, use these words to write example sentences, right? So in your example sentence, you should include the word towel food, another sentence for hand washing, another for sanitizing, another for food storage. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six words. That means matching them with the definitions and then writing examples using the vocabulary. Any question? No question? Mm -hmm. No? No teacher. <gasps> no teacher. ¿Por qué andan tan callados? ¿Qué les pasa? Uh, Vaya, vámonos a la Atenas. Let's see. Adriana Marcela. Adriana Marcela. Present teacher and I'm available now. Excellent. Ana Alicia. Se nos perdió Ana. Ana. Carlos Josué. Present teacher. David. Present teacher. Diego. Edwin Mauricio. Present teacher. Elda Cristina. Elmer. Present teacher. Jessica. Gemma. Present. José Alfredo. Present teacher. José Alberto. Present teacher. Karen Janet. Karen Stephanie. Carla Lorena. Present teacher. Lizette Dayanara. Present teacher. Nubia Zulema. Present teacher. Oscar. Oscar. Rebeca Marcela. Present teacher. Rodrigo. Rebeca Marcela, sí, ¿verdad? Me dijo present. Yes. Oscar Mauricio. Oscar. Oscar, Oscar, Oscar. No here. No. Okay. Vamos a ver. Eh, Ana Grisel. Ana Grisel. No. Carolina Abigail. Grace Michelle. Present teacher. Rosa Hilda. Present teacher. Luis Mauricio. No. 
Okay. Well, now we can go to the teacher. activity. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm here. Teacher present. Yo guardi, ¿dónde andaban cuando los llamé? Yo voy de camino, teacher. Okay. ¿Quién más me dijo present, teacher? Jessica. Me. Jessica. Me Ana. Vaya, pero no me digan presen así a lo suelto, porque si no, eh, las tendas no se las toman cuando ellos corroboran, porque así, si me dicen todos presen al final, yo no entiendo quién es, ¿verdad? Entonces, de uno en uno, díganme, soy fulanito presen. Porque... Sí, ser... Hola, me habla Diego. Sí, Vaya, allí presen. sí, porque ajá, si lo presen, presen, ¿quién, quién, quién? Más que tres me dieron present Jessica, Jessica, where are you? Ya, yeah, Jessica, Angel. Ahí está. Sí, pero yo, ¿quién, quién, quién, quién? ¿Quién era? Vaya, Oscar. Present Annalisa Valle. Sí, hoy sí. Hoy sí ya sé quiénes son. Vamos a ver, Oscar no está. Teacher. Hola. Sí, tomó mi, mi presente. Sí, ya hoy sí, Diego, porque ya vi que es usted. Ok. Vaya. Ok, vamos a ver. Me dijeron Ana, Diego y Jessica, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver. Karen Janet, no here. Karen Stephanie, no here, ¿verdad? Eh, Oscar, no here. Rodrigo Marcelo, no, ¿verdad? Ana Grisel, Carolina, Luis Mauricio, bah, hoy sí, ahí quedamos. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm going to send you in groups. Remember, what you're going to do is first match the vocabulary with the definitions and then you write one sentence using each of the words, okay? Yes, yes, teacher. <laughs> yes, teacher. <laughs> yes, teacher. Oh, sí. Que los molesta, pues sí, ¿verdad? Y si no, ¿quién? Si no los molesto yo, ¿quién? ¿Verdad? <laughs> Vaya, pues allá vámonos ya. I'm going to make the groups again because they were, you know, we finished with the groups we bring at the end because we were adding the ones that were coming later. Right now you are 18, perfect number. So I'm going to make six groups of three. There we go. Great, great, great. Try to join. Let's finish. Oh, well, let's do the activity, right? And then we will share together. Check, check. Try to join. Try, try. Grace, Selmer, José Alfredo. Ya la pueden ver. Sí. Uh, hi, Carlita, tell me. Uh, Diego say me that is he, he is uh, listening listening if he hasn't arrived yet y, y Grace está por aquí yes teacher ah bye es que se incorporó después que él me dijo ah okay 
sí que le había dado problema eh, unirse, creo, a Grace. Pero ya está por aquí. Nice. Bueno. <risa> Thank you. Eh, vaya, usted va a compartir pantalla, ¿no? Sí. La voy a compartir. Ah, pues, si sí, gusta. Ya. Sí, sí, pero. Mm. Vaya. En la primera. Dice. Por ejemplo, to let frozen food be. Eh, to let frozen food become warmer until it is uh, ready to cook. <laughs> Which one uh, is that? Towing taw food. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's like an unfrozen. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Ah, and this is Esther. This one. Aha. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Um. Or no? Yeah. To let the yes. The teacher explain us that. What? What do you want to know? No, no, no. Uh, we just saying that you ah. explain us that. Washing. I'm washing. Uh, it's what? the first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the neck it's is facing metal, I think. Equipment, this one. equipment uh -huh. and washes rinsed mm -hmm. and disinfected after each dish is oh, prepared. Yes. Mm -hmm. Teacher, what is the correct uh, pronunciation of sanitizing? Sanitizing, sanitizing. I don't know. Sanitizing. 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 Okay. Sanitizing. Okay, okay, thank you. Satanizing water. <laughs> Satanizing. <laughs> and, and with the pandemic, it become very important this sanitizing. Mm -hmm. Sanitizing. See, that, that word became very popular. Yes. Yeah. Yes, this is tasting mm. method is taking a sample of food you want to taste on a spoon. Mm -hmm. Tasting method. Uh -huh, take a sample of food you want. Uh -huh. Get over the next one for this for the storage. Purchase. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. See this one. Purchase. And the last one is this Purchase. one. With this. Yeah. Dorish. Now what do we have to do? Write two two procedures of for this one, right? Write one sentence with ah. every word. Yeah. With which words? With the this one that this that we were okay. using. Uh-huh. Okay. Understanding the meaning. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So. For example, a, mm -hmm. every workplace has to be sanitizing in mm -hmm. the pandemic time. San has to be sanitized. <gasps> okay. Sanitized. Workplace is uh, has to be sanitized. Or you have to be very careful with the conjugation of the word of the verbs, right? Why? Uh -huh. Okay. So every workplace has workplace is a eh, eh, ¿Cómo se escribe una sola palabra? Eh, una sola palabra así o, se, o por separado, teacher? Workplace, no me acuerdo. No, separate. En una sola vea. Ah, okay, separate. Okay. Has to be Sanitized. Mm -hmm. Sanitizing. Uh -huh. With the pandemia. In pandemia's time. With the pandemia? Okay. No. During the pandemia. Ah, during the pandemia. Ah, okay. During the pandemia. Of COVID. Okay. What else? 
De ahí, towing food. Mm. I have I have two sentences. One is okay with uh, hand washing. Uh -huh. Okay. And the other uh, is the purchase. The, okay. Let um, first uh, the kitchen team. Uh huh. The kitchen team cool. Cool. Hand wiping. Mm -hmm. it's, it's important to wash your hands before to eat. Before eating. Ah. Pero recuerden que tienen que usar hand washing. Porque It's wash your hands ah. es otra cosa. Ah, okay. It's not the same. Uh -huh. It's not the same. You have to use hand washing. O por lo menos hand wash. Hand wash. Uh -huh. You can use any of the conjugations, but, but check that you're using the, the same word, right? Uh, a ver. Uh... Ay, no sé. Ah. Pero, Ajá. Pero podría ser entonces hand washing before podría ser. eat. Ajá, ajá. O podríamos poner before to cook we need to hand wash the ¿Cómo se le dice? De... Ah, hand wash. De, de vegetable o algo así. No sé. Uh, I think in the restaurant, the plates, hand washing. In the restaurant, hand washing, the plates. Algunos restaurantes usan lavaplatos y otros los lavan a mano. ¿Me dice? Sería lavarlos a mano. Entonces, ¿cómo sería la oración? And in the restaurant, I wash so? the plates. In the restaurant, I wash the plate. The plates. Plates, ok. Yeah. I'm washing. And a dish and or plate. Dish or, or plate. Plates, porque es la vajilla. Dish es cuando es el plato de comida. O sea, ah, okay. uh -huh. Okay, the next one is tasty met met como es metal metal tasting metal 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 in the restaurant <laughs> use the tasting metal metal for the for Customer. the No, pero es que aquí se refiere a la comida. Eso. Pero es como probando la comida. Quiero ver. Vaya, entonces... En la. Sí, es que, como don't take. 
the frozen. Como no tomes el frozen muy rápido o algo así. But remember the words that you have to use are the ones in the box. No words from the definition, right? The, the words in the box. You have towing food, hand washing, sanitizing, full storage, purchase, and uh -huh. method. These are the words that you have to use in the sentence. Uh -huh. We have to sentence it for one, for each definition. One sentence. Mm -hmm. One sentence for each, for each word, not definition, for the words. Use the words that you have in the box. Not the words from the definition, the words from the box. Towing food, hand wash, uh -huh. sanitizing, full storage, food chase, and tasting, food, tasting method. Those are the words that you have to use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, hi. Hi, teacher. Um, ahorita estamos haciendo las oraciones. Okay. Veo dos Elmer. <laughs> Problemas técnicos. <laughs> ok. Ah, sí, sí, sí. Eh, se la voy a poner en el chat, Elmer. La otra. Para que no haya, haya gérmenes o bacterias. Uh -huh. uh, before to serve the food. Uh, to sanitize. Sanitizing the table. Or oh, sanitizing the, ah, bueno, ya se pusimos hand, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. The tables. Before they eat, the eating. Or oh, before they serve the food. Oh, they serve the food. Mm -hmm. We hand washing our hands. Eh, eh, remember, eh, check the, the, lo que ustedes saben gramaticalmente de cómo hacer oraciones. Podemos decir we hand washing. Hand wash. Ajá, we hand we wash. Hand wash no, no, no. We hand wash, exactly. And don't forget the period at the end of the sentence too, right? Uh, number one is this wood. Teacher, number one is okay. Before, before. Vaya. Eh... First observation, don't forget capital letter at the beginning of the sentence. <laughs> Second, period at the end. Remember that after a preposition, we use ing. So you say before cooking. 
before cooking the chicken. Mm -hmm. Before cooking the chicken, we check. Sound. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Vaya, eh, check the conjugation of your verb. Before cooking the chicken, we check if it is, eh, you can say, yes. if it is told. Si ya está descongelado, ¿verdad? Porque si no, ahí me están no. diciendo si está descongelando. Entonces, if, if it is told. Okay, it is. Mm -hmm. Told, with ed. Told. told. Okay. En vez de ING le ponen ED. If it is told. No. ED in English. Uh -huh. ED and erase the word food. Told. With the D. Uh -huh. And erase the word food. Uh -huh. Borro. Sí. Sí. Uh -huh. Nice. Yeah. Before cooking the chicken, we check if it is told. Yeah. <clears throat> before, always remember before prepositions, we use, oh, sorry, after preposition, we, we use ing, right? We hand, hand wash our hands before. Eating. Before eating, y le quitan el tú. Uh, yeah. okay. Before eating. Mm -hmm. Y el puntito al final, ¿verdad? Siempre, siempre. Escribe a bien. Vaya, server is a noun. Remember, eh, tienen que ver si la palabra que están usando es un verbo o si es un noun. Y si es un verbo, conjúguenlo y ocúpenlo eh, conjugado, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Recuerden que serving, eh, server no es un verbo, server es un noun. Ahí lo que necesitan es un verbo y tiene que ir en ing porque otra vez me están usando una preposición. Before serving. Serving. Serving con ing. The food. Coma. We, ¿y cómo tendría que ir el verbo? Sanitize. Sanitize, exacto. Okay. We sanitize, no, en ed, en, en present, sorry. We sanitize, con la e nada más. Sí, al final. Sanitize. Sanitize. Ah, we sanitize the table. Uh -huh. Ahí vayan, vayan guachando. <risa> vayan guachando que me conjugan el verbo eh, no es necesario que lo ocupen así tal cual está allí en ING ah. si lo quieren usar como ING tienen que usarlo en present continuous o en past continuous ¿verdad? Teacher, eh, Rose ahí te acabo de mandar una oración para la siguiente tal vez la teacher la pueda revisar uh -huh. ¿Lo mandaste aquí? Sí, sí, aquí. Que no puedo ver los mensajes. Ay, no se va así. No, en serio. Es un smart refrigerator. A food storage facility. Ah, this is smart refrigerator. Sí, está bien. This is smart refrigerator. Está bien. Sí. Ustedes la pueden ver, yo no la puedo ver. En el chat. En el chat. Arriba de tu pantalla aparece Rose Hilda. Ah, sí, sí, pero ando perdida. <laughs> yes, it is correct, David. Ok, teacher. Ok. 
Ok, entonces Okay, I just have one observation here. Uh, do not forget to put periods at the end of the sentences. That's extremely important. Every time you make a sentence, put period at the end, right? Vamos a have to. Así no le escucho, Titi. Grace está con nosotros. Yes, teacher. Ok. Um, checking. Después de I have to, el verbo no puede ir en ING. Ah. En lo que hablábamos ayer sobre los modas, ¿verdad? Ajá. Después de un modal, el verbo tiene que ir en forma base, no puede ir en ING. I have to tow the food for the dinner, right? Y usamos articles. I have to tow the food for the dinner. Uh -huh. Y el punto al final de la oración, siempre, siempre, no me olviden, punctuation. We have to do a correct hand washing for preparing, preparing, ing. Después de una preposición, usamos el verbo en ing. Preparing the food. De. Uh -huh. They are sanita, they, no there, sino que they. De. No, pero uh, uh, I want to put uh, there, there are, I, I can. Ah, pero entonces el verbo cambiaría. Porque entonces tendría que decir, they have to sanitize. Ahí cambia todo. O sea, they are sanitizing, they are sanitizing. O all this area has to be sanitized. Entonces, así nos damos, le damos vuelta a todo. Entonces, they are sanitizing all spaces. All, all areas. Ah, ok. All areas to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ahí está. Ajá, entonces ahí tienen que tener cuidado, ¿verdad? La, ¿Cuál es la forma en que tiene que estar su verbo? El verbo. Uh -huh. Sí. Lo, lo van a conjugar, no lo van a conjugar, ¿cómo lo van a poner? Entonces, es de, de tenerle mucho cuidado hoy. Ok, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Hi, 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 hi. Hello. I, Did you finish with the sentences? Yes. Yes, yes. Vaya un par de observaciones. El punto siempre al final de cada oración. Esa parte reglamentaria, no dejar una oración sin cerrar. ¿Verdad? Terminamos el, el... In English we say, we finish the thought, we put a period, right? Eh, Chequen cada uno de los, de los verbos. Vamos a ver, I always hand wash. I always hand wash before making. Le ponemos ING después de una preposición. Eh, siempre... Uh -huh. Before making, después de una preposición, siempre usamos ING. I always hand wash before making the food. Uh -huh. Juanito told the meat for tonight's barbecue. Nice. They are satin, satisfying. Me les falta algo aquí. Sanitizing. Sunny. Uh -huh. 
sanitizing the building uh, mm -hmm, for the pandemic, that's okay. The cereal is not food storage in the refrigerator. Mm, recuerden que aquí eh, food storage es un noun, right? Si quieren usar eh, este, esta forma, tienen que cambiarle a la oración y decir, the cereal is not stored in the refrigerator. Pero como lo que tienen que usar es food storage, ¿Cómo lo podríamos poner entonces? Podrían decir... I have a special food storage for the cereal, for example, but it's not the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Coma. Recuerden que antes de bat usamos coma. The contrast, right? That is not, is not the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Antonia, purchased or purchases? Mm, Present Jesus. or past? Okay, purchases supplies for her restaurant. The tasting method is a simple process that will help you identify specific characteristics of a wine. Perfect. Nice. Nice. Okay. You're ready. Thank you. I'm just checking one more group and then I call you. Okay. Are you ready, okay. chicas? Yeah. Sí, verdad, ya terminamos. We finished. Let's go then. Oops, I was in silence. <laughs> Vamos a ver, volunteers. Was it easy to write sentences using the vocabulary? A little bit? Yes, yes, no? Yes. Uh -huh. Was it easy? Was it difficult? A little. A little bit difficult. Okay. okay, just I'm going to give you a couple of clues. One, uh, remember, first you have to know the part of speech. That means you have to know if the word is a verb or if the word is a noun or an adjective, right? In this case, uh, today we didn't have adjectives, only nouns or verbs. That's the first thing. Si es un noun, lo ocupa tal cual está. Pero tiene que saber usarlo como noun. Si es un verb, tiene que conjugarlo. O si lo quiere ocupar tal cual está dado, cheque cuál es el, el, el tense, diríamos, que le corresponde a ese tipo de palabra. Ok. Entonces, esas son un par de cositas que tienen que tener muy en mente porque eso es algo que ustedes ya saben, ¿verdad? Solamente tenerlo en mente a la hora de hacer una oración así de cero. Lo otro, recuerden, eh, before or after prepositions, we use ing. ¿Sí? After prepositions, we use ing. For example, if you are using before, or if you are using after, or if you're using for, it's a preposition. After prepositions, el verbo va con ing. No puede ir en forma base. O sea, no puede ir en forma base. 
no puede ir en pasado, tiene que ir con ING. ¿Ok? Y lo otro, que ya lo sabemos y desde el 1 lo vengo molestando con eso, empiéceme la oración con capital letter y termínela con punto. ¿Ok? Empiece con capital letter y termine con punto. ¿Sí? Oh, one more thing. Remember, before, eh, remember the coordinating conjunctions that we were using last week. Before the coordinating conjunctions, use a coma. ¿Ok? Va, solo es tener en mente para que este, nuestra oración sea perfecta. Vaya, let's go check. I'm going to check. I'm going to share the, the page. Vamos a ver. Um, what is towing food? Towing food? To let frozen food frozen. become warmer until it is ready to cook. Okay. Yes. Hand washing. Wash your hands. Wash your hands mm -hmm. and pour hands with soap. Uh -huh. Wash your hands and pour hands. Which are the forearms? Which are the forearms? Antebrazos. Exactly. Hasta allí. Yo no puedo levantarme la mía para enseñar, pero Ana ya les mostró. Right? That's okay. the forearm. A ver, sanitizing. What is sanitizing? Equipment is washing, rinsing, and desinfecting after each dish is prepared. Nice. Equipment is washed, rinsed. ¿Qué es rinsed? Mm. <laughs> like enjuagar? Enjuagado, sí. Porque oh. están, miren, washed, rinsed, and desinfected. Prepared. Lavado, enjuagado, desinfectado, preparado. Right? All are the ending edo. Ado edo, right? Bueno, en este caso, ado. Ok. Eh, food storage. Employees who reside, to, who receive and storage food organized items in the correct place to avoid bacteria. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very good. Uh -huh. Purchase. Buy package food only from licensed suppliers. Okay. And the last one, tasting food. Take a, Take a sample of the food you mm -hmm. can taste. On a spoon, right? Okay, nice. Very good. Very good. Now, I want to listen to example with the word towing food. Towing food. One example. Towing food. Mm -hmm. uh, before cooking the chicken, we check if if it is towed. If it is towed. Very good. Hand washing. Hand washing. We have to do a correct hand washing for preparing the food. Exactly. Correct hand washing. Nice. Sanitizing. There are sanitizing all areas to work. Okay, very good. Food storage. Food storage. In the kitchen, all food have to be organized in food storage. Nice. Food chase. 
You have to make a purchase of bread for the lack. Ok, nice. Ahí purchase está siendo usado como noun. Very good. Nice. And the last one, tasting. Tasting qué? Method. Tasting method. If the main chef wants to add a new dish in the menu, the manager has to use a tasting method to approve it. Hey, that's nice. Excellent. Ooh, yeah. Okay, great. Now let's go to the last uh, step of this class today. Chef. We have been talking about procedures all week, right? So in pairs, you're going to choose two of the procedures you follow every day at your workplace. You have towing food, hand washing, sanitizing, food storage, food chase, and tasting method. Probably you will tell me, mm -hmm, we don't have many, but yeah. If you are not in a, in a restaurant, at least you have to try hand washing, sanitizing, and purchase, right? Y pueden cambiar el food storage por storage and storage of any material that you use. Ok. Vaya. Esa es si, si trabajan en un restaurant que cualquiera de los otros podrían decirme como que este no. We don't do that. But there are some that you can use, right? Independently of the type of work that you do. Okay, so make a PPT to present the two procedures, right? The two procedures that you choose from here that you put into practice in your workplace. Any question? Any question? No, teacher. Okay. What, about, what about the create the mini poster? Sí, allí dice mini postcard, pero como ya no estamos presencial, sino que virtual, en vez de un postcard, sería una PPT, ¿verdad? O si usted prefiere hacerlo en el notebook, ahí nos muestra el mini póster en el cuaderno. ¿Verdad? Uh -huh. Porque cuando elaboraron los libros, acuérdense que estábamos allá por el 1900. No, vean. No. <ríe> Quiero ver estos manuales, son de por allá, por el 2018, 2019. Estábamos en presencial. Entonces, por eso dice mini póster. Pero nosotros, bueno, yo lo cambié a PPT. Porque como estamos en virtual, es mucho más fácil hacer una PPT que hacer un, un, un mini póster. ¿Verdad? ¿Qué dice mi PPT? La PowerPoint presentation. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. Vaya, lo, voy a, lo voy a mandar con el mismo grupo con el que acaban de estar, que, que ya están bien familiarizados con todo el vocabulario que han estado usando. Ok. Vamos a ver. Mm -hmm. I think about 10 minutes would be enough for you to, to describe the two procedures. And then we come back. Don't make it too long, right? It can be about two, well, three steps to develop uh, that procedure and how you do it in your workplace. I imagine in different workplaces, uh, the procedures, of course, will be different. There we go. Vamos a ver. Join, join. Remember, you're choosing only two, right? Only two. Ahí vamos a trabajar. Hola. Ah. 
Hi, let's start. Let's La. start. Hi. How much time? Um, yo casi no, casi nunca hago los mismos procedimientos en mi trabajo. Por ejemplo, en el mío, si está ahorita como bien. ¿Cuál sería el primero entonces? Quiero ver. Va. We can do something. For example, when yeah. you when you arrive at your workplace, Adriana, what do you do first? I turn on my computer. This is number one step. Yes. Well. Okay. Uh huh. This is a this is your your procedure in the every day. Yeah. I mean, I have to. A manage nine computers, but the first computer that I turn on is my laptop. So I have every charge, day. You are in charge of of nine computers. Nine computers. So yes. you have to to check turn. it before to turn on the computers. Do you have mm. to check it? No. No, I just turn on all the computers one by one. You do that. You have to do that yes. every day. Yes. yes, because I'm in the RPA team. That is the area that automize, automatize, 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 that program robots for make a more Automate. Uh -huh. uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm the area that uh, create robots that for make a uh, efficient uh, the procedures in the bank. So, so well, you uh -huh. arrive to your work number and then you number one. No, I think it's the nuestro trabajo because it's a workplace. Mm. Yes, but uh -huh. using the vocabulary we were working with, right? Uh -huh. from, the, from the vocabulary we were studying, choose to and write the process. Okay, containing, containing method, purchase, tagging food, food store, sanitizing with, with them, verdad? Yes. And we choose hand washing and sanitizing. Pero vamos a hacer imágenes o okay. qué? No, the description of the process on how you. Ah, mm -hmm. ah okay, okay. Okay. Este, no sé si alguien puede compartir pantalla para ir viendo cómo formulamos. Yo porque estoy Exacto. desde la tablet y aquí me cuesta y ni he descargado. Ay, voy a compartir ya. Por favor, yo, yo igual estoy en el teléfono, no puedo. Uh -huh. Bueno. Sería. My. Mm. A ver, ¿cómo podríamos comenzar? Ah, pero como, como es de, relacionado con nuestro trabajo, ¿verdad? Mm. 
Sí. Uh, uh -huh. In your workplace. How do you do that process in your workplace? In my case, I purchase, purchase the material for made uh, things. And storage the material for for made uh, things for the clients. No, the Vaya, quiero ver su esposa Apple. Wet your hands, apply soap, lasher and scrub your hands, rinse your hands, turn off the. Ay, no veo. Of the tap, tap with, care. with care. Dry your hands. Okay, yo puse. Wet hands, two, apply soap, three, rub in a circular white until. Forming. Do apply soap. Do apply. Ajá, es que yo lo hice en singular. Ajá. Yo lo hice para. Do apply soap. Uh -huh. ¿Qué más me dijo? Yo puse. Tree roof. In a circular white untile from from foaming. foaming. Que significa como frotar de forma circular hasta realizar espuma. Y eh, luego en el cuatro puse ten interlock your fingers. Five. Make a circular movement between the. Ay, no puedo pronunciar nudillos en inglés. Que no. Ay, es que aquí el, el traductor no, pero no sabía. Me tira que la palabra es. Can. Ay, qué difícil. <ríe> Se escribe K-N-U-C-K. L E S como nudillos. Vamos a ver. Ah, sí, ya sé cómo. Ajá. Okay. En the tombs, que es como los pulgares. Así va. En the six. Wash with a noun water. Si quiere. Si quieres se las comparto acá en el chat. Se lo pelo. Ay. Este, ahí me lo puede mandar a mi chat también. Yo soy como Carla. Ah, quiero ver. Espérenme. Carla. Karen, Karen. Rebeca, novia. Ahí hay varios nombres. Carla Leiva, ya la vi. Sí, ajá. Ok. Ya, se lo mandé. Ajá. Así, así es como más o menos yo lo... lo... 
lo pienso que son como los pasos, un poco más técnico el, uh -huh. el vocabulario, pero no lo, no lo puse eh, en the plural, sino que singular. Uh -huh. Rings, que, que le traduce como rings. O como rings. Rings. Sí, ella dijo que el, el rings era como en Ajá. Ah. Por eso es el rings de que copamos el camello. <risa> no, pero cualquier. Hi, teacher. Hello. How are you doing here? Oh, we make a procedure we to, of the work. Oh. Uh, okay, only one? You need to make two to choose? Yes. Okay. You ready? No, I, we have only one. I have, uh, oh, sorry, I have a uh, auto. And okay. when I when I get to work, um, the work to the third temperature, temperature, no sé si es eso. Temperatura. Temperature. 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 When I get to work, the work to the to the temperature check, and and then we wash our hands in the sink and disinfect our shoes. Okay. And then you. Um, That's that's the last step you do. Yes, no. Teacher, ahorita que estaba escribiendo otro ejemplo, eh, me surgió una duda y es más porque no recuerdo cuando decía esto de la lista: eh, atender y asistir. Ajá. Cuando atiendo, ayudo y, digamos, asesoro a alguien, es así. ¿cómo se escribía? Atend. Assist. No, that's assist. assist. Sí. Atend es uh, asistir. A ver, uh -huh. atend es asistir y asiste es atender. Oh, ok. <ríe> sí, son folks, false cognates. Ok. Uh -huh. Me lo voy a llevar ya, fíjense, porque solo faltan cinco minutos. Five minutes. Ah, vaya. Ya tenemos el ejemplo de todos modos. Ok, perfecto. We will listen to a couple of volunteers.
A ver, ya estamos todos. Sí, ¿verdad? Ok. One volunteer. One volunteer to share the PPT. Me, teacher. Ok. You can David. You can share this. Share the imagine, please. Okay, it's a moment. One moment, please. This <coughs> up. The activity is a, a execution of a construction project. The procedure is uh, step one, a preparatory meeting. Step two, initial meeting. Step three, check the topographic trace. Step four, check the level of excavation. Step five, approve the placement of materials. Step six, testing the materials. And step seven, approve or reject the construction. Okay, thank you, Edwin. Thank you. A ver, Edwin, you have the right to choose the next one. Mm. Uh, grupo de Adriana. Adriana. Okay, thank you, Edwin. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know when you can see the screen, please. Oh, yeah. Can you see it? Yes, now yes. Okay, uh, it's about my procedure at the bank. Uh, the step number one is before turn on turn on my personal computer. I sanitize my personal area area. Uh, step two, check the equipment and turn on every computer that has storage for save the files. And uh, step number three is run process in the different computers and purchase in case that we need. Okay. That's all. Excellent. Thank you, Adriana. It's 10 p.m. Ah, se salvaron. Tomorrow? Tomorrow, I'm going to listen to a couple of you at the beginning, okay? At the beginning when we start the class. Now, let's go for the last attendance. Adriana? Present teacher. Anna? Present teacher. Carlos Josué? Present teacher. David? Present teacher. Diego. Present. Edwin Mauricio. Present teacher. Elda Cristina. Elmer. Present. Gemma. Present teacher. A Elmer le toca quedarse hoy, hoy. Jessica. Present. Gemma mañana. José Alfredo. Present teacher. José Alberto. Present teacher. Karen Janet. Karen Stephanie. Carla Lorena. Present teacher. Lisa Dayanara. Present teacher. Nubia. Present teacher. Oscar. Rebeca Marcela. Present teacher. Rodrigo. Ana. Ana Grisel. Carolina. Grace Michelle. Present teacher. Rosa Hilda. Present teacher. Luis Mauricio. Ok. Bueno. Ahí estamos. That's it for today. Have a nice day. See you next class tomorrow. Right? See you tomorrow.
Bye bye. Good night. Bye, good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Hi, Elmen. Tell me, do you I have control. any questions? Uh, no question at the moment. No questions about the platform, about the material? Um, no. Classes? No. Mm. Okay, I'm going to show you something here in the manual. Come on. I want to close it. Okay, no. I want to show you something in the manual that you can uh, do for practicing a little bit. Okay. A part of every class and uh, the exercises that you have in the platform, in every lesson in the book, you have some material, right, that you can use, that you can put into practice. Uh, most of them are videos for you to practice listening um, because we, can, we cannot put those videos in class because if no, some will, will say, hey, why are you using materials that are not yours, right? So that's the reason why we cannot use these types of materials, but they are available. Uh, they are available in the manual and you can perfectly enter, uh, click here and watch the videos, right? So every lesson, independently of on the page, for example, that was tomorrow, uh, that is the day after tomorrow. But check here. Beginning a lesson, beginning a lesson, a part of all the activities that we have that we work in the lesson, you have uh, some material. These are two readings, right? Well, one reading and one video. You have noodles and company service process. So you want, you want to practice more and you want to learn more about processes, you can perfectly come and watch this video. 10 tips to improve restaurant service, learning more about restaurant, you can perfectly come and read this article, right? And like that, at the end, in the previous ones too, that's why I say independently of the unit, right? How strategies restaurant marketing ideas, you must try. You have a, a video. And restaurant startup, you have another video. So in every, every lesson or every two pages, you have a video. And the same in the previous manuals, right? So a part of having the exercise, the assignment for the moment for the class, you have these videos that are like an extra for you to go practice. Yes, this was today's class. No video here, but we had it in the, one, in the material that we were working yesterday, right? As we continue talking about the process, or some processes, right? We have the links over here. For example, for, my, uh, for tomorrow, that we are describing steps and procedures using this structure of first after then, uh, we have some material also, right? 
handling changing situations with a customer focused mindset and talking about work schedule. So you have two videos that you can uh, watch. The purpose, right? The purpose is that you improve your listening. Because as I said, we cannot do these activities in class. We cannot put the videos in class. But in your free time, I know it's not much, right? But in your free time or while you're having lunch, you can perfectly come and watch those videos, okay? Any question? No question. No? Did you know about those videos? I don't watch the video. No? You haven't watched them? Okay. Now remember that they are they are there, right? So yeah. And anytime, anytime you have uh, you're free or something, you can uh, watch them because they they are always there in the manual. Um, from time to time, I share with you also a link, right? A link with a exercise related to the topic or to the structure that we are studying in class. I share it there in the WhatsApp group. So you have also the chance to go and, and, and do some extra practice, right? Like yesterday, I shared a link for you to continue working with models. And not just for doing exercises, but also for reading or getting to know more about the structure. If you say like, oops, I have questions here about this structure, there is some extra information uh, for you to learn more about models, right? That we have been talking about models during all this, this month. We have been talking about all of them little by little, like one, one day and another, another day. We have started to repeat the models, right? With different uses because they have different uses. So you can perfectly enter the link and, and get more familiarized with them too. Mm -hmm. So that's like, uh, like an extra practice, a part of the exercises that we do in class, right? And of course, a part of the platform. Um, but that is to enrich your learning and to help you right in this process. I don't know if you have any comment, Elmer. No comment. No comment. Okay. Well, now you know about the manual, right? And you know that you can enter and watch the video or you can go to the other links, other exercises. Okay. Well, that's it for tonight. Then, excuse, excuse me? I'm going to see the, the videos in the weekend. Okay, so. yeah, perfect. Perfect, they will help a lot because they give you like extra practice, right? And especially of the, the listening where you can uh, listen to native speakers, right? Using the language. Okay. Well, okay. have a nice night then, Elmer, and see you tomorrow. Thank you, you too. You're see welcome. you tomorrow. You. Bye. Bye-bye.